big, big show. What have we for everyone tonight? Huge show tonight. He is a true inspiration. Neil Danaher and his great mate Tim Watson are coming in for the Pudding Show live tonight. They'll be on the panel with us. Absolutely brilliant. Damien Barrett tonight with an explosive report on the 2006 West Coast Eagles Premiership year. You will not be able to turn away. It's very tense this week between you and me, Jim. Oh, yes. It's the big clash with previewing the rules and the cats. And what about this segment? New to 2016 and explosive. What the fuck? What the hell? And it is the race that everyone wants to be in. The footy show stakes once again, Jim. You mentioned the massive game Saturday night between the Cats and the Kangas. They dominate our panel tonight, and this man has been the talk of the competition so far this season. He's a superstar from the Cats. Patrick Dangerfield! <laughs> The swagger over there. Just well, one after another, and then you sort of fell away at the end for nah. <laughs> Well, King here, we've got oh, the no King worry. of Geelong, Ooh, and Christ. we got little. There, yeah, we're going to get Dad. to all of that. Now, <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, yeah, he's got to be in his bonnet, Stop. this gentleman, to the point where none of us quite know where he's at. We haven't seen a lot of him today. Played 303 of the very best games for the Cats. The star of this show, Sam Newman. Oh. <laughs> Breaking tonight, Ooh. I can, the footy show can, well, I just say I can you exclusively can. in yes. case there's litigation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll, I'll take the responsibility. The footy show can reveal tonight, or I can on behalf of the footy show, <laughs> a mass sacking and resignation of a major AFL department in the AFL. Really? Effective immediately. Oh. Oh. I'll be back. Oh. All right. Shortly. Oh. A teaser. <laughs> To tell oh. you this, breaking oh. tonight. Okay, well, I've never seen anything seat. like it. He's had lawyers yeah. crowded around him. Attorneys, around. he's had the CEO of the uh, attorneys, a band oh, of advisors, uh, had lawyers. Normally, you've got the courage to go on your own conviction, but this one, you've actually had to lean on some serious. People. I have, and uh, so it, it, it could, the could litigation could be involved. Be good right. God, Beck, how do you look? Yes. You look fantastic. Thanks. And uh, as yeah, you... We're doing a really serious topic and then you just swung like that. Yeah. As you walked on, did I detect that see through that dress? Oh. <laughs> no, not. That is. That, that no. is. No. Yes, no. Stay there, Beck. All right. No, I'll just sit down. I'll sit down. Can we uh, formally introduce this man? Because we love to have him on the footy show and he's one of my favourites as well. He's a superstar of the Geelong Football Club. Please put your hands together for Patrick Dangerfield. Uh. Paddy, you sitting third on the ladder. You had a few hiccups a couple of weeks ago. Um, have you ironed out those hiccups? You had a good win against GWS on the weekend at home. Have you ironed out the hiccups that we saw against Collingwood and Carlton? I don't think we've totally ironed them out. They, they weren't great weeks of footy for us. Um, but we're never satisfied. We, we're not, we weren't satisfied with the result last week. We played some good footy and, and obviously got the result that we were, we were looking for. But at the same time, we, we didn't kick all that well in front of goal. Mm. And there's plenty to work on. Mm, mm. Mm. Now, what about um, Tom Hawkins? That's been a big issue this week. You'll obviously be lining up without that man. He's the, he's, he's the man that everyone wants to kick to. All Geelong supporters want him up forward, but he's obviously been rubbed out for, for one. Did you agree with that, that, that not going for the two weeks and he's, we've got the one week. It's a, it's a tough one, obviously, if you do uh, challenge the yeah. decision and then you end up, uh, well, Tom ends up missing two games. For that. Um, that can really hurt us. So, obviously, he's a, he's a focal point for us and Phil's obviously a chance to get, 
<laughs> Phil's a chance to get some work on uh, summer bait, summer bait, some stage this year. But um, disappointing. But I think Brad Scott said it best during the week. He, I know Sam's got something to say about this, but Phil Davis and you are very good friends. So have you been in touch with him during the week and just mentioned? We had, what... dinner, we had dinner after the game on the weekend. Yeah. Uh, could he I have? have? It's a wonder he could eat. Fair dinkum <laughs> after that. Well, punch <laughs> to the jaw. We had we had soup and I had I got the straw out, Phil. But, oh. um, uh, Phil wasn't Phil wasn't happy with with Tom getting rubbed out, and I think he was like the rest of the competition, disappointed the way that it ended. But at the end of the day, it's done. We can't, um, we can't worry about that now because we've got a, a fierce opposition we obviously play against and we have to focus on them. Oh, now. Well, 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 this is the breaking news. Yes. Oh. The match review panel <laughs> have handed in their commission oh. as a result <laughs> of that <laughs> decision. <laughs> uh, they have cited pressure of business. They're too busy to right. give the match review uh, uh, department their full attention, or else how possibly would you come up with suspending someone for that? Uh, that is in effect saying that Tom Hawkins is not eligible and too dangerous and too vicious to take an arena for a week or two weeks because of that incident, and they are now uh, retired. Oh. And uh, if you would <laughs> like to be on the match review panel, oh, we no. have we have a fleet. You'll think I'm making this up. Yep. I bet we get you're text. You're very you're very hot under the collar over this one, aren't you? I, I am, you're Rebecca. Very hot under because, the collar. <laughs> well, 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 I am because um, you cannot have this game oh. go on like this. There's a taxi. If so you've you, set up a campaign, have you? We have set up a campaign. If you would wish to be on the match review panel or you are shocked or really annoyed at that decision, whether you're a Geelong supporter or not, ring the AFL tomorrow and uh, put in a submission, an application form to be on the match review panel. Um, so, Sam, the taxi that we just saw then, that's not a setup. That is act they're actually taxis actually in Melbourne driving saying, around tonight. With have that. you had enough of that decisions <laughs> like that? I asked a couple of people to Did come you? on yeah. and they said they're too busy. No, that... That is absolute. There should be three tests of the match review panel. Yes. Is it reckless, is it petty, or don't waste our time? Mm. And that is in the don't waste our time category. And to suspend a man in this brutal, vicious, yeah. virile game we call <laughs> AFL football for that is a disgrace. <laughs> Just one minute, for a place. If you have tuned in and you can see Bill's a Geelong man, he's a North Melbourne man, he's a Geelong man, I'm Geelong, she's Geelong and he's North Melbourne. No. If you want to turn off, don't, because it just happens to be coincide with the fact we had these two people on. This is not a North Melbourne Geelong fest. We've got a lot of other teams and very <laughs> important <laughs> things to cover. <laughs> so stick no, with no, us. No, no. Uh, uh, now, Paddy. Uh, were you part of Men at Work? I mean, are you a fan of Men at Work, of course, a great uh, music band? Uh, very big fan, Bill. Oh, yeah? Because you are in the clip. Have a look at their clip here. This is you. That is you, Paddy. Look at that. They come from the land down under. Look at that. Even handball. That is you, Paddy boy. Some of the best work there, Bill. That is true. Look at that. That is you. With a wig. Yeah, I don't mind that. <laughs> with the Geelong colours on as well. So, we're way short. And what was... What was wrong with um, Jolie Boy last week too? He wasn't happy. A uh, few people down at Geelong aren't happy and this was Joel after the game. Don't know if you saw it. Have a look at this. Uh, apparently we don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we haven't got that. But he wasn't happy, let me tell you. <laughs> Bill's lost the plot. Uh, oh. Nick Del Santo's here, everybody. Yeah, oh, Nick's here. <laughs> The promos all week, what did they say? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a lonely week, Bill, wasn't it? We've uh, been obviously involved with Channel 9 for about 10 years now and all week it was superstar Patrick Dangerfield on the panel. Yep. Yep. No mention of myself or old mate beside me. So. Yep. And then you did the news cross tonight? Yeah, I did the news with uh, TJ and they were waiting for Paddy Dangerfield to come on and unfortunately <laughs> they got me again. So, <laughs> mate, the as attack Channel 9 with have, me. Have you thawed out <laughs> after Friday night? I think oh. you got to three degrees. Yeah, it was definitely fresh on, um, on Friday night. Great game, obviously really happy with the result. Um, obviously got a great relationship with Tassie and Hobart in particular, but geez, on Friday night it was as cold as I probably had How cold yet. was it, Nick? Real cold, Bill. <laughs> I think we got a photo here. <laughs> Oh, no, we haven't. No, no we haven't. Well, Bill, we're not allowed to show it. No, we're not allowed to show it. All, all your old ones as well. But speaking of cold, and obviously we're out there running around, so we're able to warm up. But 
A few of the uh, staff members, club officials, there's Peggy O'Neill, I think yeah. it is, and Brendan Gale from the Tigers, out of, you know, out in the cold. Oh. oh. Inspirational leader, our leader, behind behind all the men, behind the perspex. Behind the glass. <laughs> I'll tell you what happens, Stanger. Oh. <laughs> right, so let me tell you exactly what happens. Oh. Last year, I sat exactly where those magnificent Richmond officials sat, oh. and idiot on the end there goes, look at Jim sitting out the front hoping everyone sees him. <laughs> so now, I go behind the glass, oh, and I'm in trouble for doing that. Because they kicked the goal, and you stood up, and it hit you in the oh, head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the worst attempt at mark I've ever seen. Would you prefer I sit in the car park, Bill? Yes, please. Oh, right, we'll do that. Uh, you can't Just sitting win. up there like Jackie. And, and half-time, when we were walking off the Jeff. ground up by four goals, and you're... In the race on the on the grass. No, we're about to do something with the Premier of Tasmania, Dell, to no. secure the, the money, the secure the, the money that you get paid. Good answer. You'll go all right. You'll go all right. So it's absolutely freezing down there. But what about the rain at Metricon? I couldn't believe what I was watching on the TV. This was absolutely incredible. I have no idea of how they moved the ball from one end to the other. Remarkably, actually, I don't know how they could do it. <laughs> and this guy sitting in his snorkel, did he just have the snorkel in his car and thought, I'm going to do some snorkeling? I have no idea. Took Actually, a... remarkably, there were some pretty good skills it in that was. game. I have no idea. Took us they... back to the good old days, and Foss, you would have been around for this. Have a look at this. Some vision from oh, the old no. days. <laughs> look at the mud there. The other boy tiptoes in. Have a look at the ball just stops here. <laughs> but uh, I think Azeebs picks it up here in a minute. You got Zeebs gets a kick. That's all right. So the good old days. This is at Lakeside Oval. And, and, and look at this. The hail here out at Waverley. That's Paul Peos takes a mark for the Bears. Look at the hail. That is out at Waverley in the good old days. Gee, well, tough that back in the good old days, were we, Fox? <laughs> well, we were, and uh, that's what the game's about, Bill, playing under all the conditions that, uh, of course, they don't have that anymore because they don't have cricket pitches in the middle of the no, ground. The two grounds, the major grounds we play on, they take no. the pitch out of the MCG and they don't have one at Etihad. Or so. Subiaco or Adelaide. They're mm. a thing of the past. That is it. <laughs> Merry Creek soil. Hey, Nick, you must be really happy <laughs> with on. how your side's travelling at the moment. <laughs> I, I want to ask you, though, um, you missed out, obviously, with uh, premierships with the Saints in, yes. in 09. And, and ten. Do you think this? <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Oh, I don't want to go on about that. But do you think this side that you're playing with now is better than the Saints side that made it into the grand final? Oh, it's a good question. Thank um, you. I've been asked that a little bit. Really hard to, um, you know, work out who's better um, from 09, 2010 to where we are right now. What I think this year is it's a lot more even amongst the teams. You know, obviously I think our teams very evenly spread. Our footy is really competitive, but I think there's probably eight teams, and I mean that honestly, eight teams in this situation, right, 11 yeah. games down, 11 to go, that could think that they'd be around yeah. the mark come so the end of the year. So if you've been asked that a few times, Dale, surely you've come up with an, up with an well, answer. Well, that's an right honest now. answer, Sam. <laughs> no, mate, you're <laughs> either, they're either a better <laughs> side or they're not. Well, are they okay, a better I'll, side? I'll say that we are then. <laughs> thank thank no, you. Do you think that, that, that's not the honest answer. Do you think that the top eight's <laughs> settled now, or do you think there's going to be somebody outside the eight that could give you a run for your money? Oh... Probably not outside the eight right now. I think the teams that are roughly around the top four and obviously Geelong this week, we play Hawthorne the following week, then Adelaide and Adelaide in our next three weeks. I think those teams are really competitive. Played Sydney two weeks ago and they were fantastic. So I would have thought one of those teams at this stage are the likely challengers. Saturday night at Bill. the Eddie Head Stadium. Uh, see you on Big, big game this one. The Cats were third on the left. Suspended and Stevie Motlop plays his 100th game. Takes on the top of the tree, North Melbourne, who are 10 and 1. And they're very, very good last week at defeating Richmond by 70 points. In comes the gold man. Not sure yet. We'll just see if he gets there. And Mullet comes in. Out goes uh, Wright, who's not all right. And Majak Dor, who was very, very good last Wasn't week. He? And that is a shame, Nicky Dell, because he plays a couple of good games and then you drop him. Yeah, Mad Jack's in a really difficult situation. Obviously, we've got the reigning All-Australian um, Ruckman, and any time you can get him back into your lineup, you obviously take that. But um, I thought Mad Jack was fantastic. Came in some challenging um, uh, circumstances down there, but I thought he handled himself really well. And just unfortunate that he's not this. He was good Ruckman. in the cold weather. He's Wasn't always he? always yeah. good. He, he has a crack, which is great. Yeah. Actually, no point asking any of you what you think is going to happen in this game. Well, Danger, what do you... Who will grab well, you? Mott's, a, Mott's 100 games this week, Bill, yes. for the footy club, so that's a, a great achievement for him. Yeah. 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 So, I think mean, it's I mean, a, a really good contest. Obviously, North have been a, a brilliant team all season and we've had our ups and downs, but um, it's certainly a game we're looking forward to. And home game 
at Etihad yeah. against a team that's home ground is Etihad Danger. Mm. Yeah, I'd prefer it to be at <laughs> uh, <laughs> down the road at Simmons, but that's the way it is. That's the way. Uh, I think the cats play things. good footy everywhere. We won't worry about that now, Sam. Are you tipping this week? Because oh, you had a massive it sook last <laughs> week. Yeah. Every time we yes. got to you for your tips, you went, yeah. "I'm not tipping. Yeah. Tipping, stupid." <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, Are you tipping? I'm coming out of early tipping retirement oh, for one reason. Thank one reason. The fat down here got nine out of nine you last did. week. Yeah. <laughs> I got eight. You got eight. Oh, oh no, of course. Uh, <laughs> I have forgotten more about football than the fat ever oh. knew, so I will personally come back into the tipping arena, and if at the end of the year or in the end of the month mm -hmm. I haven't tipped more winners than him, oh. I, yes, I, I, I don't want to mention what brand it is because it sounds I'm elitist. I have a, a, an Italian sports car. Oh. Yeah. It's a Lamborghini. Oh. Cost, yes. cost a million. <laughs> it cost a million. Oh. Um, <laughs> yes. And I will lend it to Fat. The beauty of it is you won't be able to fit in it. I'll lend it, <laughs> I'll lend it to you for oh. a month. Good. If yeah. I... Yep. Oh, oh, that is on. You can see if you can drag a couple into the passenger seat just for the fact that you're driving it. Exactly. And, uh, and, and, and you'll be excited with and, the return if, of your man. And, and don't hold despair on. if you think uh, we're all tipping the sides that we all played for and uh, have allegiance to. I think the kangaroos, who are on top of the ladder, will beat the cats. <laughs> and uh, why? 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 Well, I think is Mr. Goldstein yes. back in town, uh, back. Uh, the man that I personally oversaw you his did? great yes. rise to uh, <laughs> supremacy. And no, I think that uh, you must go with the league leaders. There's no other logical reason why you'd pick Geelong, so let's try and be logical and fair. And I think the Kangaroos, because it is a very, very difficult position to play the ruck, and they have a, uh, an experienced, uh, an experienced yes. uh, workhorse in uh, Mr. Goldstein. Very <laughs> easy, um, Sam. The what, ruck work is very that, easy. Phil, very it's very it's easy, the ruck. Also. The art of ruck work what is... What technique, application, all intent? I just got some vision of my good self in the first game ever. Have a look at Skinny Billy here. Still straight down. Oh. <laughs> no. Mate, it was like Goggin to Farmer. No. <laughs> Actually, Farmer to Goggin. Oh, no. <laughs> it was like Polly Farmer to uh, Billy Goggin there. What about that technique? Straight down uh, to Darren Bill, Morgan. Uh, Bill, I, I, I can't uh, criticise that. That no. was... Uh, there's a man jumping up, having no idea what he's trying to do, happened to get a ride on the bloke he was jumping up against and got his hand onto the ball and it had a 50-50 chance of going to someone in the same coloured jumper and you were so lucky. And that's the last hit out you ever got in the game. Well, yeah. I tell you what... I've, I've watched the game. I watched it through to see how you went. I'll tell you what's interesting about this, Donuts. Donuts. Is Bill brought the video in and yeah. said, please, to Two Dogs, who's one of our great... Uh, uh, digital yeah. man in the room and said, dogs, please dig this bit of vision out. What dogs then did is rolled through the rest of the tape and took great uh, glee in showing us some of these uh, from Bill's first There's game. Jacko, Mark Jacko. Jackson. Here comes Bill in the goal square. Oh! 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 What is that, Bill? Here we go. There'll be another one here. Yeah. Brownless. Oh! Oh! Mate, fair to I get in five metres in front of my opponent, get oh, the no. kick right. Bend over, Bill. God, what Scotty McIver. Fair to they don't look after me. No wonder I, I only kick 441. I've got to kick a thousand. <laughs> Kicked it to me, right? Oh, oh ratings. Right. Well, Anyhow, uh, <laughs> so, yes, so you've just, uh, just automatically tipped along. No, you? I've thought about oh, yeah. it. I've agonised over it. But I can't talk anymore because your tipping segment just went for about four minutes. Oh, yeah. So I just have to say Geelong. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a lot more of the footy show coming up for you on the other side of this. Stay tuned. Tonight on the footy show, maybe it's cold outside. Perfect conditions for the inspirational Neil Danner and his great mate Tim Watson to come in and chat about the big freeze at the G. <laughs> Oh, Sam's mailbag always gets the nation smiling. Wrap your laughing gear around that one. Damo rolls in with his explosive report on the Eagles Premiership team of 2006. This bloke knows when he's on a winner. Speaking of winners, it's time to back your most fancied runner in the footy show stakes. Tonight on the footy show. <laughs> Wow.
Last year, of course, the big freeze for motor neuron disease was absolutely sensational at the MCG. Some of the biggest names in football and the entertainment industry got behind what was just enormous. There's Brian Taylor. Uh, here comes the great Tim Watson. And, and our man, who no one's ever seen anything like it, wearing the man Keeney piled into the water. <laughs> And it was all done for the best possible cause and it was all driven by the most incredible man. And he's back here to tell us how 2016 is going to be bigger and better and joining him. A man who uh, I don't reckon there's ever been a better uh, player to pull a bomber's jumper on. So please welcome the great Tim Watson and Neil Danaher. <laughs> Bring back enormous memories. Last year was was just huge. Um, I was huge, and uh, I'd like to thank the generosity of the football show, all the viewers out there that uh, kicked us on last, this time last year, and. Uh, I hope they can be as generous this year as well. Jim. No doubt they will be. Now, before we get to the serious stuff, uh, did you ever think when you came up with this brilliant campaign to get people sliding down the slide into the ice that you'd get a near to 70-year-old man in a mankini? <laughs> <laughs> well, Sammy was a superstar <laughs> last year. Um... <laughs> They had to do a reveal, you know, they were in the gown <laughs> and uh, they did the big reveal and I've gone, you idiot. <laughs> I, was, I was standing at the back and I actually didn't have the uh, bikini, the uh, little yes. g-string on yeah. and Gary Lyon, our friend, yep. he said, and, and Ross Stevenson, I said, I think I'll just go out without the uh, bikini yes. and he said, and Gary and Ross said, yep. Put it on. <laughs> Put it on. It's not... It, the cause is not that... It can't be that important. <laughs> I said, no, we'll give him. If we're asked to do it, we'll... Uh, but I did have the... Uh, yes. I think I had it on. Didn't look as I had no, it on no, then. Not there it is. Oh, that's, uh, oh, no. that's the point of entry right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could I say, my three sons... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my three, no. my family, yes. including my three sons, didn't speak to me for six months after that. <laughs> they said, you stupid old prick. Hey, um, <laughs> hey Neil, <laughs> it's been 12 months since you came on the show last year. Uh, we were just chatting to you out in the, in the green room. You, you're mentally as sharp as ever, but physically, what's happened between then and now? Um, uh, MND is a progressive disease. It's um, uh, typically aggressive, Jim. Um, it, uh, from diagnosis to death, it's on average a bit less than three years. So I feel very, very fortunate. Um, my disease is as aggressive. A lot of MND sufferers are out there now. Within three years of diagnosis, they can't move. So I feel very, very fortunate. And I feel with, uh, with my luck, in a sense, I can represent them and the campaign it's not about me, it's about the people who are suffering a lot worse than me. It's about the people who be diagnosed two to three every day. There'll be a thousand within the year and uh, there's no treatment, there's no cure and no hope. So this whole campaign is to raise funds to find the treatment, find the cure and give hope. And uh, the great Tim Watson, who's on loan from uh, Channel 7. Thank you very much yep. for coming in. Um, <coughs> now, tell us what you've learned about this man and about the whole experience of being part of it, Tim. Well, I think, um, I think Neil, and I don't want to embarrass him, um, but uh, I know he loves, well, me, go on. He loves me talking about him anyway, <laughs> I know that. But uh, he, he's, like, what he's doing is so courageous. I think everybody acknowledges that. Um, I think the byproduct of this, though, too, is and not just about MMD sufferers, but I think Neil, he talks about no hope for himself and he understands, you know, the bleak prognosis of MMD. But I think because of the character he is and the way that he portrays 
himself in this bleak situation. I think he's provided a lot of inspiration for a lot of people, not just MMD sufferers around Australia, but anybody that comes in contact with somebody who's so positive, mm. he's so optimistic about life and the way that he's approached this, I think he's become an inspiration for people right across the country. And uh, obviously he's raised a lot of awareness about MMD. This is about raising money for MMD. There's a lot of people out there suffering now. And Neil has explained it very clearly about the fact that it's not going to help him, what we're doing. It's not going to help a lot of those people who have already been diagnosed with MMD. This is about somebody that you know that may get diagnosed somewhere down the track. And this is all about what he's doing now in creating this and shining a torch on. This is all about helping someone else somewhere down the track. And that's why he's such a selfless individual. And that's why I think everybody has got behind the campaign like they have over the last 12 months. Tim, Tim, just because you said something nice about me, don't expect me to say something nice about <laughs> you. Do I lay it on too thick or not? Neilo, is it, is it fair to say that all monies raised last year has been spent on research it has, Billy. And, and we're going again? Yeah, we're going again. And the money that's been spent, Billy, uh, uh, we made a few breakthroughs. Yeah. And, uh, and, we really, and we'll talk about that, but uh, there's a lot of work still be, yeah. to be done. Um, there's hope now because yeah. of the money that the, everyone, the footage show family, there's been a breakthrough in the lab that they've started to find a compound that will stop MND. Good. It's in the lab, we now need to get the clinical trials. So, all of a sudden, from the efforts of uh, the footage show and all the people mm. that support the course, there is hope. Yeah. Well, Good. Footy Show audience, you can see uh, down the bottom there, the Footy Show audience was incredibly generous. And we're going to need that again, Nilo, fair to say, because we're about to explain to you exactly how you can help with one of our own members. But there you see the uh, website, freezemnd.com, and also uh, 0400064064. Bex, down with your beautiful uh, uh, family, going to get to them in just a sec. I think we see why Seven don't release Tim to us uh, very often, Forcey. <laughs> Uh, Goes no. all right at the caper. Yeah, he's a star, oh. and uh, he's, learnt, learnt, don't you say a word. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We'd like to think we had a hand in it. We, we just uh, got him to the uh, to the starting line. He's just left us for dead. He has. He's, there's a vapor trail behind us now. <laughs> you, you, your family have been enormous in this, Neil. We've we've known exactly how uh, they've done the whole beanie thing and everything, and they're back in with uh, Beck Madden down in the the crowd there, Beck. Thank you very much, Jim. wearing the beanie tonight. Jan, listening to that being down in the crowd here and listening to your husband, you must be so incredibly proud of the strength and the selflessness that, is, that, that your husband is portraying to the community. Uh, look, we're all proud of Neil, but, um, but one, he does hog the limelight a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he really does. And there's so many people now um, involved and on board and helping, helping um, the cause out and... Uh, just for example, this week we've been um, packing beanies and we've had, you know, 20 and 30 people coming every day just to help. And that's just a small part. There's so many people now helping and really appreciate it. I read something today that was quite frightening, that, that many people that are diagnosed with MND are actually pass away in the 12 months that they've been diagnosed. Neil said just before that he was extremely lucky. As his wife, you must be cherishing every single moment and every single day that you have with Neil. Oh, we do. Um, every day is so special and any little event that comes up, you know, we just, we just have so much fun. So, um, we, uh, he's very cheeky, I can see him up there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, look, it is, it's really important. And just for example, Ozzy's wedding, that was um, just such a fun day. Well, so. speaking of that, I wanted to say first and foremost, congratulations to you, Lauren, because she only got married a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> We've got the new bride here. What was that day like for you? There's some incredible pictures that I hope we're showing you now. It was an incredible day because it was such a happy day. Your dad walked you down the aisle. What was your mem what's your memories of those days and that experience? I was extremely special. I feel really lucky to have dad walk me down the aisle. He made it down without tripping, so <laughs> 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 um, 
Oh, extremely special to have family there, friends. So. And he got up on the dance floor as well at the end. Oh, He's yeah. Still got the moves. <laughs> Having some pretty good uh, moves on the dance floor. Actually taking over the dance floor. Right. <laughs> <after> there, <so. laughs> now, shouldn't, you only got married a couple of weeks ago. Shouldn't you be on a honeymoon? Yeah, we, we had two nights away and then we went straight into packing and sending out everyone's beanies. Oh. So, so uh, my honeymoon's been in Beanie head Headquarters in Mount Waverley. Right, yeah. it's a very romantic honeymoon. So, yeah. Beck, you've been uh, in charge of packing the beanies. What's been going on the last few days and how can people get them? Um, can they still get them in the post? What's the go with the beanies? Because they are absolutely fantastic. So, it's been incredible, the support from everyone around Australia. We've been packing and sending to um, WA. South Australia. It's been incredible. They're flying out the door. So we've got fairly limited stock left, but we're still doing online sales. Um, but unfortunately, we can't promise that they'll be there on the day. So the best opportunity would be to come early. We've got two places that we're doing the march from, the Holden Centre and Fed Square. We're there from 12 o'clock, so we want to get rid of them as quickly as we can. So we've got a big beanie swarm coming to the Jeep. They'll also be sold at the MCG as well. Yep, so, so they're $20? Yep, they're $20. Okay, so they probably won't reach you in the post if you order online, but it doesn't really matter for Monday. No. You should get one anyway because it's going to be a long, cold winter. Yes. <laughs> and put your beanie on, exactly. <laughs> so, Beck, Lauren and Jan, thank you so much for coming in tonight and joining us on The Footy Show. Uh, you've been an incredible support to Neil. I'm sure he's very, very thankful of your support and standing by his side all the way. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Thanks, thank you. family. Now, this is where we get it uh, properly warmed up here, Neilo, because this is how we as the footy show can help what is an incredible cause. Jared Waitley was good enough to nominate one of our own. Take a look at this. It's too serious a group. We're a very serious group and I think for morale and I think for false bravado, which we'll need at the top of the platform, we need the funniest man in football. So I nominate to be the bonus slider in the big freeze to Dave Hughes. There we are. And now they are the superstars who are going to be doing this live. There's some big names there. Big yeah. names. Uh, we've got your boy Lloyd from Lord Town Lord 9. Yep. We've, uh, we've got Timmy's boy, Kevin C. <laughs> we've got Koshi, lovely down the bottom left there. Another Sam, Samantha. Uh, yeah. Great names. And Good Eddie. Ed's there. Oh, yeah, he, well, he's the biggest man all over. We nearly forgot him. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is My what we... Need. <laughs> we, we need 10,000 bucks. That's the minimum that needs to be raised to get Husey uh, doing the slide. I think we might have Husey actually on a link from a park. Are you there, Husey? Yeah, I am, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By Neil, obviously, I was inspired by you, JB, in that heroic effort in the corporate box down at the top. <laughs> it's no doubt it's inspired by that. But I thought, if I'm going to do this big freeze and I'm looking forward to it, I've got to prepare. Yes. That's why I'm here at the ice bath at Olympic Park. I've got the beanie on; that'll keep me safe. And I've also got the Carlton Guernsey on. You wear that at the moment, you feel no pain. So I'm, about to jump in the, I'm about to jump in the ice bath. It's about five degrees. There's six, 60 bags of ice in there as well. Here I go, and I will not flinch. You watch this. <laughs> I'm not feeling any pain. What's doing? I'm feeling no pain. This is how I do this. Thing. We feel beautiful down here. Neil, I can't wait for Monday. <laughs> it's going to be great. Hey, uh, Husey, oh. we've already, yes. in the time that you've descended yourself into that water, we've already heard from our great friends at Sportsbet who have kicked ten grand in <laughs> to get you. They're going to dress and, uh, you as a Carlton legend, so uh, we've already heard that yeah. from Sportsbet. By the way, how are the boys downstairs going in that water? <laughs> Mate, the, the, the nads are going OK, you know why? Because I'm a smart guy and I put on some deep heat before I got in, so I'm feeling about nicely. I'm feeling great in here, I'm going to have a great day on Monday. I mean, I'm just going to stay here for the rest of the show and, I... and watch everyone do their thing. <laughs> JB, I think it should go under. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll go under. I'm going to go under. Go. For you now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
So we got the 10 grand already. That's how you can get stuck in. The footy show audience last year, Force, absolutely knocked this out of the park. 0400064064, freezemnd.com. Get donating immediately. Yes, well done to Dave Hughes there. Hey, Tim, you are <coughs> one of the great players of all time, of course, and one of the great special comments men, aren't you? So what happened here? Have a listen to this. <laughs> Christensen obviously didn't have his poo... <laughs> Christensen didn't have his poo, Tim. You always finish your sentences, Bill. I always told you that. <laughs> and you are one of the great fashionistas of the game. You love to dress up. And uh, hey, remember this little scarf a couple of years ago? Look at you there with your silly glasses and that scarf on, oh, Tim. That's not a scarf. That was a tablecloth, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah, we also dug uh, back into the uh, Danaher archives because we oh. knew that we couldn't let you just slide out of here oh. untainted, the great Neil Danaher. Let's have a look at this. This is on the day that you were engaged. Oh, oh, look at this. Wearing one of Sam's famous <laughs> woolen mitts. How <laughs> 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 do you look, Dale? There we are, and look at this uh, at Assumption uh, College. Uh, Assumption? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, if you were the Assumption, they made you wear your hair that way. But you had to wear your blazer, didn't you? Yeah, did. Era, era, era rum. Hey, uh, yeah, that's the war cry, Bill. We did. Now, before we get to the game, uh, I've got, I forgot to mention you've got to SMS the word freeze, freeze. to that number, 0400064064, or jump on the website and get stuck into that. Don't worry, Neil. By the time we've closed business tonight, there'll be uh, money piling in from everywhere. They're doing it already. All right, Bill, while we've got these two Ooh. superstars here, uh, well, let's get this game done, eh? Yeah, Monday, of course, the Queen's birthday game. When it's not even the Queen's birthday, it is the Melbourne Football Club who are 11 and six losses, Grimes, Vinci, Heine is back, and Kennedy, oh, Garlick's been dropped in that side, take on the mighty Magpies, who are 12, and only had four wins, no support for the Magpies, and Nathan Brown, Wits, Williams, Marsh, and Phillips come in, out goes Oxley, and out dropped is Travis yes. Cloak, that is a big, big out. That is a huge out. Having said all that, I'm going with Collingwood, I reckon, just, uh, Nicky Dell. I'm actually going to go with uh, Melbourne, I think. They play the MCG yep. very well. Yep. Uh, Collingwood, a little bit disappointing last week. Jack Vaughan coming back after two weeks. Obviously, had a week off with suspension, a broken hand. I think he'll only complement what has been a fantastic midfield this year, and they'll get the job done come Monday. Yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think Melbourne are going to be too strong here. Jack, Jack Watts having a, having a great season, uh, the best at AFL level. Uh, I think it'd be too hard to stop this weekend. Mm. Samuel? <laughs> I've studied this carefully and I uh, have no idea, so I deferred to the champ and he said, pick the demons. So I'm going for the demons. Yeah. Yeah. Not only were you an absolute star and a very young mm. captain of the Bombers, but you then went down to Melbourne as a coach and dominated there too. Do you think your old team are going to be able to beat Collingwood? Uh, I think they'll get up. Uh, I, went yeah. I, I, I went down there today and they talked like I did last year and made no impact. <laughs> <laughs> but it was interesting, young Biney yes. might be back. Yeah. It's a very important player for the dude. So. <coughs> hey, tell us, the neurologists, <coughs> pardon me, believe they're pretty close to finding a breakthrough, yeah? Well, they tell me that of all the neurological diseases, um, including Parkinson's, MS, Alzheimer's, the closest to a, a breakthrough is with MND. So that's really given us a lot of hope. Um, but here in Australia, it's woefully underfunded. They're doing a lot of great work. But they have to stop for a third of the year to go and rattle the tin. And I'm saying, well, we won't find a tournament way to do it. You get back to work and we'll find the money for you. Brilliant. And Nilo, every single dollar, every single dollar goes towards the research. A hundred percent, totally transparent. Uh, we're a very small foundation. No one gets paid. Yep. We've got a great sponsor in AFL Cranbet Community Program. Yep. They pay for the pool and the ice. So every cent that you donate, Every dollar goes directly to research. Yeah. 
Brilliant. Hey, uh, Beck, we'll get back down to you. I think the donations are already piling Absolutely. in. Absolutely. It is a sensational start. So we've got one from David at South Bank who's already donated $100. Thank you very much to you, David. And also Andrew at Black Hill has tipped in 50 bucks. So make sure you keep that money rolling in throughout the night. All you need to do is text FREEZE to that number on your screen. Now, just quickly, Jan, when we showed those old pictures of you and <laughs> Neil, she was absolutely mortified oh at her hairstyle. You just went, what did you say? Oh, my gosh, what was I thinking? Yeah, it was a perm. They all perm. <laughs> <laughs> the old perm will get you every time. Um, my tip for this game is Melbourne and Patrick. <laughs> and Nick, I hear you brought in some special items that we're going to raise money and, and donate an auction off. Yes, we do, Beck. Uh, every footballer has boots, and these are mine for the weekend's Ooh. game, JB. Ooh. So, Ooh. Oh, okay, hello. Hello. Uh, after we win on the weekend, these boots <laughs> will be auctioned off uh, to the highest bidder. So, support the cause. It's a wonderful initiative. Uh, and that's what I'll be. They appear to be North work. Melbourne colours, those boots, yeah. too, don't you? So we appreciate you flying the flag. Very um, well. well probably a bit very too nice danger. Um, after we win on the weekend, uh, I'll be donating my jumper signed by the entire 22 boys from uh, the winning team come Saturday night. And a slab of curtain grass. Oh, I'm it? donating a slab of curtain oh. grass. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you the buyer for uh, his boots. boots. Yes, uh, it'll be Leegy from LA Smash, oh, who yeah. has the best museum, yep. uh, along with uh, yeah, yeah, he has the best Geelong Museum of Memorabilia. He'll buy those boots. He hey Tim, we can't yeah. let you go without firing one at you about your uh, son, who we understand is <laughs> he can actually no, <laughs> oh, no, 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 not about the, the obvious, but uh, talking more about him being a barista in New York. Is that in fact true, or is it one of the great stories that has no foundation? It's true. It's true. Yeah. And is he any? Would he be any good at that? No. no. <laughs> You're not rushing I'm over there anytime I'm soon. I'm surprised that he even knows how to turn a coffee machine <laughs> on because he's never shown anything. He's never been inclined in that way. But can I also just say that yep. um, every every cent uh, counts, and uh, I think that's really important for people to know out there. That I mean, Neil has articulated that. But every dollar that is raised can make a difference. And also, I'd like to thank you know nine. For participate. It's very hard to bring all the media together. It's very hard to bring the whole footy community mm. together. But everybody is behind this, and we really like to thank all those other media partners yep. that have you know, joined in this. I mean, we, we smash each other around from time to time, but David every, Kosh. everybody has got behind this, and they're pushing it in a really, really big way. David is, Kosh is and David Kosh is behind it as well, yeah, Billy, yeah. and he's going down the uh, <laughs> the slide. <laughs> on my, oh, you're going to push him? No, we're going to make sure there's extra ice in the bottom. <laughs> <That's not good. laughs> but uh, no, we thank. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight, too. Well, well no, it's Timmy. absolutely brilliant. Well, I tell you, we're already hearing in me a piece that the donations are flying in. So make sure, there you go, you SMS the word FREEZE to the number or get online, freezemnd.com.au. Five bucks every time you text, so get stuck into that. As uh, Sam said, great of Tim to come in, given that he works for another network. We always seven, he works for. Uh, you can mention it. No, well, absolutely. Channel 7. And <laughs> Hello to Lewis. On, oh. the, <laughs> on the first panel ever of the footy show, so he's uh, footy yeah. show royalty. But, Tim, thank you very much. Please. And for the courage yeah. and uh, public honesty of the great Neil Danaher, it is quite astounding and we love everything you do. Thank you, JB. Well and um, uh, the campaign, the campaign ends on Monday. It's all over. So, um... If you want to get involved, get involved now. We close it down. Every dollar counts. And without you, we won't find the kill. Good man. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to have Neil Danaher and his lovely family in here on the footy show tonight. Of course, they were raising awareness for a cause that's uh, become very familiar, sadly, to many of us. It is MND, and all you need to do tonight is SMS that word FREEZE to that mobile number, and that automatically donates $5 to this very important cause. And as Jim was saying before, we had the donations already rolling in. Um, Kimberly from Coroit has donated $10, and that just shows that every single dollar counts. And Alexandra from Montrose has donated $50. So thank you very much. Every single dollar counts. Yeah, we love it. Absolutely. Keep it coming. We'll keep you updated right throughout the night as to how the footy show can contribute to such a ripper cause. Now, massive games this whole weekend, but this is huge. Port Adelaide, Western Bulldogs. Adelaide over Saturday afternoon. Big win, Port Adelaide, last week over Collingwood at the
indeed by 67 points. And as you can see, very, very happy with what they're bringing to the table. Unchanged, mm. the Western Bulldogs travelling the state. They're doing absolutely nothing wrong either. Honeychurch comes in from the cleaners out the foot. Ruffhead plays his 100th game. And these are two very, very exciting times, Willis. Very, very uh, big game, this one, Jimmy. Yes. Um, exciting teams. You That's were saying, what I said. Yeah. Uh, do you know the um, Western Bulldogs have not beaten Port Adelaide in Adelaide? Or maybe at Adelaide Oval. So I'm going to go <laughs> with Port Adelaide to win this game. I reckon they're back. Thank you, Del. Yes, congratulations to Jordan Ruffhead playing his 100th game for the Bulldogs. I actually went to the Collingwood and Port game on the weekend. I thought Port were very impressive. Why did you go to that? Just having a look. Bit of scouting, <laughs> Bill. But uh, young Impey, number 24 for Port, was fantastic. Gave him a little bit of flair, broke through the yes. lines. Similar to a few of the uh, Western Bulldogs half-backers. But I think at home, Port will win this game. Yes. <laughs> um, interesting, Bill, talking about the Bulldogs not uh, winning in Adelaide Oval. Uh, they've won eight of the last ten games that they've played against the Power. So I think I'm... Given that, Good, I think they'll win. Bill? Yeah. I know this is going to be hard. Can you put up the Port Adelaide side? Yes. And, and read up the top of it. I, I, when I was at home watching the show, there's right. some very good stats. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Look, Port Adelaide have not lost to the Dogs at Adelaide Oval. Mm. So, so thin. No. <laughs> so that's what I was saying. That's well, all was I'm that saying. what you were saying? Bill? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, no, no. No, that's nothing to do with what he said. He just told you another stat that was mm. correct. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think. I think it was pointed at me. I think their mids are going to be hard to beat for the Bulldogs. They've got some very good young players there. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Bill, so and I think, I think right. they're going to be very difficult to beat. So who's going to win? Western Bulldogs. Right. Yeah. What is wrong with you, you stupid man? You were right, and so was he. You were talking about two separate things. Uh, now. Um, uh, <laughs> Oh, what are you well, talking about? Yeah. No, yeah. It's a good I have point. no idea. <laughs> uh, well, Bill, I'd say I've tipped two winners uh, in the two games we've had so far, and I'll tip another one, and I'll be tipping the Western Bulldogs. Yeah. Get the, Lam get the Nissan Lambo ready. <laughs> yeah, the Nissan. Lam <laughs> and uh, don't, don't be a smart ass about ruck work, mate. I, I, I've written a book on ruck work and uh, done uh, brochures and videos on it, brochures. mate. Uh, and, and you've the, forgotten the, all about it. They told me this is a good example yeah. of my ruck work. No, we like that. <laughs> You're actually jumping away from the ball. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening yeah, there? What is happening there? What is that? So that was a good... Uh, so, that, so I've sucked... I was sucked in well, there. Well, I don't know. I we said, just mention you doing well in the ruck and that's what they that's put it. up. Is it all right? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, with your back to the ball sort of moving away because from... Because I was pushed in the back. Were you? Yeah. Oh. yeah. I hate when that happens. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> anyway, um, Bill, I'm surprised you tipped so so up front there, because we agonised over this. Yes. You remember on Tuesday in the meeting? Yeah. You don't remember Tuesday? No, no I do. And, but I'm very confident in my tips. As I got nine last week and you, you got up. No, I, got, I know. What's See, going I, I don't know. There's collusion over no, there. What is going well, go on? Go on. Just... Well, you can't get up in the middle of the show and talk to him when we're talking Yes, here. I can. You speak to her and she'll speak oh, to you. Oh, I'm well, speaking to him. <laughs> you sit there and I'll talk to so, Beck. So, Bill, oh, have right. a seat. Yeah. So, we agonised over this we did. in the meeting, so, didn't we? It's a and tough game. This is very important. I'm so distracting the over there. This is very right? important That's for Port, isn't it? Because yeah, I think so this game logic, will I'm determine what happens for them in September. Yes or no? I'm spot on, and that's why I went with Port. Where are you going with? No, I thought you went for the doggies. Oh, no, that was Paddy. OK, I'm going for Port only because they're home. Well, now you've got to change seats again because the old enforcers... While you're changing seats, I want to tell you something that's coming up that's very important and you want to stick around for this. Damien Barrett is joining us very shortly. He's been working on a special investigation for the next couple of weeks and it is into the controversial 2006 Eagles flag, so make sure you don't go anywhere because you'll want to see that. Now, this segment has also just snuck up on me and I think it might have just snuck up on you. It is now time for Sam's Mailbag. <laughs> Snuck up on me, Beck. Isn't it? You're all prepared. From... Well, you weren't even in the right seat. Well, c because. Anyway, I, won't go I shouldn't have said that. From, <laughs> Get on from on. Wyatt. Get on. Wyatt of Kilmore. Mm -hmm. Foss. Remember a few years back the Barossa bought out. Uh, that is, he's, he's written bought. B O U G. It's mm. brought. It is out. Brought. Yes. Bring to bra brought. 
Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> if you're going to be a smart Next. ass, yes. get it right. Yes. <laughs> Bring brought, buy bought. So it's brought, right. uh, not bought. I see. Bought brought out oh, a yes. quirky full-bodied Shiraz to celebrate all things South Australia. And this mm. is it. It is called the Bogan. <laughs> now... That's a beautiful no, one. That is. I, I haven't... Uh, Jim is a, a, a vintner. No, I'm not, but I'm an enjoyer. <laughs> uh, that is a fantastic wine. That is beautiful. Uh, and, and, of course, the word bogan is synonymous with South Australia. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Not. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. That's uh, from the... So, uh, this is... The <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, they've done it again, says Wyatt. This is yes. not me saying it. This is Wyatt. Well, they've done it again, bringing out a cheeky little number to celebrate Rebecca's appearance on the show. You think we're making this up, but we're not. Yes. Uh, this is called... da -da, The No Rules. Oh, no. Shiraz. Oh. <laughs> Where is it? Come there on, it is. hang on, get it close up. That's there, it. That is Fair That's Dingham. legitimate label? Yep. That is, we have not put that label on. That is a legitimate label from uh, the Bogan and the uh, Barossa Valley, whoever yes. makes it. I should know who makes it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and um, an old-fashioned, uh, 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 and it is, I'll tell you, I'll just read the back of it. It is an impudent, frisky contribution with seasonally plucked grapes. Yes. And it says that here. Uh -oh. And a... Oh, and no, a... Oh. Here we are. Well, and a what? what? <laughs> and it leaves a tart piquancy on one's palate. Uh, let's hope uh, if I drank of it. But that's what it says on there. Yeah, that's right. Oh, and the next, there's another one. There's yeah. another one. And, uh, oh, no, there's not another one. <laughs> and they brought out a, just to brought out a contribution to Sherry. Uh, they've named it after me. It's called a dry sack. That's it. <laughs> that's it. They're, that, now, they're all legitimate. They're all legitimate ones. <laughs> They're all legitimate wines. Off to a very good start. Yeah, oh, letter I, two. I couldn't read my own writing yes. about what was written on the back of the bottle. Jimmy. No, not Jimmy. Better. Not Jimmy. <laughs> Jinxie. Yep. Jinxie of Perth. Oh, Sam, key. did you see where the AFL have banned... Ha <laughs> have a listen to this. The AFL have banned players kicking foam footballs into the crowd after a match. Well, um, well may they ban them because Plugger Lockett, when he was uh, in charge of the Swans, have a look at how he delivered them into the crowd. Look at them all done. Plugger singled out someone who'd been giving him buggery for the day and tried, tried to rip his head off. Yes. Um, they all ducked. They knew it was coming. Yeah, they, they all ducked, they didn't they? Yeah. Um, now, yes, so players yes. have now, now this is true, players now have to politely hand them to the person, this is the footballs, in the front row. It's, uh, mate, it's the, it's the old, can you pick a turd up by its clean end, the yes. old politically <laughs> correct nonsense. Yes. Uh, now as a protest, uh, I, I, was, I was actually going to kick some footballs into the crowd. Here? Yeah, yeah. I, and we told management, because and? we're under uh, strict orders we to, uh, you know, oh, 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 We've yes. got the sort we of had to, We had to fill it. out three forms. <laughs> well, I had to sign a no liability you form, <laughs> a malicious damage form, and permission to invade someone's personal space. By giving... <laughs> so I didn't sign any of the forms, so bugger it. So uh, here we are. <laughs> You need to understand it's a thousand dollars fine every time you do it. Every it's a thousand dollars fine, and, uh, and uh, well, there's one. I've got that. petty cash, Jim. I got that. In, I got that in my fob pocket. Oh. Right. There's one thousand. There's two. Oh, 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 a good oh. grab by the cat. The AFL have decided that that is dangerous to kick foam they footballs have. into the crowd. Is there any end to the state and the country we live in? We love it, but for God's sake, don't nail us to the floor. Or we'll all have to leave. I have, um, <laughs> I have a letter here. Not normally uh, anything to do with me, this segment, but uh, we have received a letter, <laughs> and request. this is legitimate, Beck, uh, yes. from um, a gentleman, who says the following. Dear Mr Newman, I am the creative and artistic director of the inaugural Melbourne Music Theatre Festival coming up in January 2017 and 
As part of the festival, we will be staging a new production of Gilbert and Sullivan's HMAS Pinafore at the Athenaeum Theatre. We've already confirmed, uh, confirmed several major artists awaiting correspondence from Dave Hughes concerning the role of Dick Deadeye. We acknowledge you, being Sam's, vocal abilities and sense of comedy, as well as your distinct level of education. And we would be delighted if you would consider the role of Sir Joseph Porter, the first Lord of the Admiralty, in this production. Now, um, here's Sir Joseph in action. Just take a look at what they're suggesting our man uh, get involved in. <laughs> now, Sir Joseph Porter, he could do that. You, you're certainly younger than that bloke. Exactly. Uh, and, and we don't say that about too many people. Um, now, uh, Sir Joseph Porter is described as the following pretentious, bombastic, self important, patronising yep. to those of a lower station, tick, tick, and tick, possibly tick. a drunkard. Now, tick. you, of course, have played a drunk on this show uh, very nicely in the past. Oh, no. Hey, Mr. Newman, we're looking for you anywhere. You've got to do street talk. You've got to do street talk. What are you doing? You've got to do street talk. Oh, well. <laughs> previous actors, as I finish this letter, previous actors that have taken on this role include Sir Alec Guinness, Sir John Gill, good Peter Ustinov, and George Caponaris. Oh. So, Fort. Oh, well, I think well, we've got the hat here. Beck's got the hat. Um, are you in or not? Uh, well, I could be. If the hat fits. Sir Joseph Fort. I'll be a thespian. Yes. <laughs> You're not a thespian, yeah, are you, Beck? Oh, no. No. Um, well, are you? Have you done any uh, stuff? Acting? Stage work? Yeah, no, yeah. only at school. Put the what, hat on and see if it fits. Oh, okay. Are you in? Which way? No, that, that's, I had it right. Yeah. Yeah. In? Oh. Hey. Are you doing it? it, it what, what is the remuneration to retain my services? <laughs> no, well, I have to get paid You're going to charge them. Charge them? Yeah. My <laughs> word, I'm going to charge them. <laughs> No, you've made that up. No, it's, no, it's a, a real genuine letter. Genuine letter. If you want to be a part of this segment, by the way. Chief Bow Box 9, Melbourne, Victoria 3001. Sounds up mailbag at 9.com.au. 9now.com.au forward slash AFL footy show. Uh, yeah, Beck, donations are absolutely flying. Yes, they yeah, read are. a few more out, Beck. I don't have any right this second. Thanks very much. But all you need to do is SMS the word freeze to 04000. Cherie from Melton has uh, sent in $2. <laughs> um, $2 Barry counts. From a dollar Watsonia counts. It doesn't matter. The best part read, about it. We're going to read thousands out. The best part about it is that 100% of the donations go directly I, I, to I, MND I research. Someone we're going to take a break on the footy cents. show. Much more on the other side of this. Still to come. Damien Barrett lifts the lid on all the controversy swirling around the Eagles team of 2006. The horses of the footy show stakes are chomping at the bit and ready to run. Plus, the audience puts Big Sammy's wits to the test in What the Foss. You'll be singing in the rain. Stay with us. Speaking of Sportsbet, Saturday night's blockbuster between the Cats and the Kangas. Place a bet on the big win, little win market with Sportsbet. If your bet loses but your team still wins, yes. they'll give you your cash back up to 50 bucks. for example. If you have a bet on North Melbourne to win by 1 to 39, but they come out and smash the Cats by, let's say, 10 goals. Oh, oh, let's just let's say that, Bill. That's say. not in the read. Shut up, fat. You'll get your cash back. That's real cash. Straight back into your sports bet account to get involved. Download, uh, download the app today. And always, Beck, remember to gamble responsibly. Absolutely. Well, we have something a little different for you this week. Damien Barrett has been over in the West working on a special investigation, and he joins us now to bring us that special investigation. Please put your hands together for Damien Barrett. Good evening to you. So I mentioned you've been working.
working on this for quite some time. You've been over in the West last week pulling this all together and this investigation centres around the controversial 2006 mm. grand final win by West Coast. Yeah, and ten years since that uh, win, Beck, and the club is marking that occasion with a, a reunion in Perth uh, later this month. Not all players are uh, RSVP to that mm -hmm. in a moment, but as you touched on, the player behaviour of that time has clearly overshadowed the uh, achievement of that premiership. And not just the player behaviour at the time, but the lingering effects that uh, directly relate to the uh, player excesses of that time and we've now got 10 years of memories, we've now got 10 years of hindsight and the key Eagles people attached to the footy club at that time are now uh, about to relay their thoughts of that controversial period as they build up to the reunion. I guess if, if you could roll it all back and give back the premiership and say that all our players are fit and well and healthy and we still have been running it, having a normal life, we'd, we'd give it back tomorrow. <laughs> In 2006, we had the Fletcher incident in Vegas. Um, the players probably um, partied reasonably hard. We started to get quite a bit of feedback. Uh, we had a think tank in November 2006 as a board and uh, <clears throat> where information was fed to the board and we then realised we had to take some serious action. Dean Cox in his book referred to double figures being the, the amount of players who were potentially using. Do you f concur with that number? Uh, we initially thought there was a, a minority, but what came out in Broome in November 2006 indicated that wasn't the case. It was a lot more people than we thought. While the Eagles were shocked by the level of drug taking, systematic player lying covered up the depths of the problem, which at this point was out of control. Oh, there's no doubt that uh, from my meetings with club officials that uh, the players lied. I don't think so. I, I know so. I mean, you can only ask so many questions so many times and you, you expect a, uh, a pretty straight and forthright answer and uh, unfortunately I didn't get it, we didn't get it and some of the people who were probing didn't get it either. You ask people deliberately, are they, are they taking drugs and they say no. So it took a long time for us to be convinced that we did have a problem and there's always rumours but when you ask people to elaborate, they won't. They don't want to be involved. Ben Cousins' behaviour had worried the Eagles for some time, but when in early 2006 he swam down this river to avoid police, the point of no return was reached. Ben Cousins slipped quietly into West Coast headquarters this morning, almost certainly for the last time as captain. The Brownlow medalist this morning summoned to a meeting with the club's hierarchy. His five-year reign as captain has come to an abrupt end. I think we're all really concerned for his health. At that particular time, the playing group in particular could probably see there were signs that Ben was starting to you know, miss a few training sessions. At times he wasn't you know, coming to the club in a greater state. Look, there were worrying signs before then um, and we were aware of them. We, we were aware of them as early as 2000, 2001. It was a matter of you know, how they'd escalated and, and uh, Ben's behaviour at that time wasn't good. As Ben Cousins spiralled out of control, tensions erupted when Andrew Embley and Daniel Chick came to blows at the club after a weekend confrontation had turned ugly. Chicky thought that I'd set him up, which wasn't the case, but regardless of that, one particular afternoon I found myself um, at the club, I was just getting a massage at the time, and Chicky came in, started throwing a few haymakers at me, and a couple of the, my teammates actually got Chicky off me. And that night I started to get a little bit upset and a bit angry that a teammate would actually come in and act like that and so being the silly bloke that I was at the time I ended up making a phone call to Chicky and I just left a, a voice message um, pretty explicit and abusive and just told him what I really thought of what he did earlier and if he wanted to sort it out properly then we could meet at the club the following day at 7am and we could you know, put the headgear on and the mouth guard in it. So the following day I got in the club at 6.55 in the morning and Chicky at 7 o'clock sharp comes storming in and, yeah, fair to say, we didn't have time to put any headgear on or anything and we just started uh, just started going at each other. So I think Pete Worsfold at the time, who was running our leadership program, he must have just been starting work and just heard this massive ruckus and thank goodness he sort of came in and um, got in between us because he could have just gone forever. As the off-field chaos worsened, the Eagles, in their desperation, turned to the AFL for help. They remained hurt by the response they received. We just had to get to a point where we said enough's enough. Yeah. And uh, we took that to the AFL 
um, it was a difficult time for the footy club because the support we thought we'd get from the AFL ended up a, you know, an inquisition. What didn't the AFL do that you wanted them to do? Well, we wanted, to, first of all, to, to test our players immediately, all of our players, and uh, they didn't do that, and there are a lot of excuses why they couldn't. Um, and then we wanted some assistance in, in how we were going to fix this problem that we had, and uh, could they could they help us with that? And there was nothing forthcoming with that as well. So we're extremely disappointed with that because, I mean, this is new, it was new territory for all of us. At the end of the 2007 season, the Eagles saw two Brownlow medalists exit. Chris Judd, by his own choice, Ben Cousins sacked. But it was the tragic loss of another club legend, Chris Mainwaring, which forever changed the Eagles. I don't think you can, you can really understand why that sort of thing happens, you know. Um, I think that's the, probably the lowest point. Have you tried to understand it? Um, yeah, you, you try to reason with it, well, how can this happen? But uh, there's no reason, there's no rhyme or reason. To, it, it's just the way it is. It probably was the, I guess, the defining moment that, you know, that was the end of it. It had to finish. It appeared the AFL world had seen the last of Ben Cousins until Richmond Football Club threw him a last-minute football lifeline in late 2008. The footy show can reveal exclusive details of Cousins' first meeting with then-Tigers coach Terry Wallace. Yeah, it was quite strange. I mean, we picked him up from the airport, got him out the back door. We wanted to have a, a meeting where no-one would sort of uh, know where it was. It was unusual, to, to say the least. So ben came in, we did introductions, and uh, Ben sort of said, well, look, I, I need to go to the toilet and um, five minutes past, 10 minutes past, 20 minutes past, 25, 30 minutes past and he hadn't come out of the uh, the loo and I was sitting there you know, wondering what the heck was going on. That was back in the time we had shaved his head at the same stage so not sure exactly what was uh, going on. His uh, movements were quite um, erratic back at that time, clearly uh, what it said to me that this was a young man that was in a very bad way. Now, then we had to make a decision on, you know, were we prepared to take that on? Um, did we have any responsibility to take it on? Probably the answer to that is no, but we did sit back in a board meeting and sort of say, if this young man, uh, we, we decide to not give him an opportunity of getting his footy together, which means getting his life together, um, as a board, uh, how would we sit if in in, um, eight to ten weeks, all of a sudden we woke up one morning and there was a news bulletin and something horrific had happened and we believe that he was in that stage where that possibly could have been the case. Today the Eagles bristle at suggestions their premiership success was tainted. No, no I don't. Um, yeah, as I said, it was, it was a, something I'm immensely proud of. Um, I feel genuine sympathy for, for the players and their families who've have had some battles since, but the overriding emotion is of, of pride of what that group was able to achieve. It's probably something that really irritates us, you know, when people say the Premiership was tainted. I mean, the only only um, thing that drug abuse could have done was, was make the performance inferior to what it was. And I think it certainly affected us in 2007. You just don't rock up on grand final day and win a grand final. A lot of hard work, um, blood, sweat and tears goes into it and it's something that the whole playing ground should be really proud of. Did Ben ever play football on lots of drugs? I don't think so. It's hard to say but he was he was regularly tested so it's hard to say but I, I would doubt it. I'd only be guessing but I, I'd say unlikely no um, purely because if you're caught with illicit drugs um, in your system on match day, then it's an automatic two-year ban. So you know, I don't think Ben was silly enough to be doing that one or two nights out from a game. At the height of the carnage, the Eagles board rejected Trevor Nisbet's resignation. He has since led a culture makeover of the club. It's now 10 years on. We're in a much better space and we're, we're really pleased that we were able to address it, albeit we had to go to the bottom of the ladder to do so. With what the football club went through post-2007, um, they worked uh, really hard on their culture and putting protocols and um, procedures in place to actually change the club and the perception that people had off the West Coast Eagles Football Club, and it had to be done. Life after football has been very difficult for several of the Eagles Premiership 22. Their concerns are ongoing. Oh, look, we've got 
uh, several issues with probably three or four players, um, probably three uh, in particular. My last recollection, recollection of it was Ben when you came to watch um, Chris Mayne Waring's son play at a local game and he brought his own son and seeing Ben uh, with his son, you know, rolling around kicking the footy, which uh, it was a beautiful sight. And uh, the only thing I did speak to Ben that day was, you know, how are you going, how hard's it been? And uh, he's, uh, he's, um, he said, you know, Kyle, I have one good day, two good days, and so and then I have about a week of bad days. So that's how it is and that's how it'll be. I guess the, the disappointing thing is we weren't able to salvage Ben out of the, out of the wreck and that's, uh, that's a real disappointment for us. Do you worry where he's going to be, Trevor? Oh, I worry every day. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, we would, we would like him to be healthy and, and well and, you know, getting on with his life like, you know, a, a normal 36, 37 year old should be doing and um, we're not sure what space he's in at the moment because we don't have a lot of contact with Ben still but, you know, we've always wished him well and hope he can uh, overcome these issues. An amazing piece, Damo. Uh, so much has been said and written about that team in the ten years uh, that have followed, but there was a fair bit in that. Yeah, I think the depth of answers that they that those gentlemen can give now with the, the hindsight and, and the memories of it, Jim, was, was what sort of made it. And Trevor Nisbet's uh, involvement in it too was there during it and offered the resignation, as he said, and, and now he's led them out of it. But the, the lies being told, I think that was a big takeout. The, um, the admission, the effective admission by Delton Goulding that it was a majority, not a minority, and that just puts into perspective that of 22 people, you've got a majority taking and using illicit substances during that period. And I think Terry Wallace's um, yeah. explanation too of the first mm -hmm. meeting with Ben Cousins, that while he gave answers for why Richmond still drafted him beyond that point, it probably, when you sort of hear it back now, produces more questions than it does answers. It does. I, one of the fascinating things, like, that's the second time I've seen it, I had a look this morning, was that it wasn't just players v administration, the players mm. were turning on themselves. I'd never heard about that fight between Emily and Chick, so that the friction within the club was intense as well. Yeah, it was, and, and there were perceptions over what was being done uh, with and around Ben Cousins at the time, and look, there's always two sides to every story. Um, Andrew, I think, bravely decided to talk about it, I, I believe, for the first time publicly about yeah, what never happened. Heard that and and I, look, when it's all said and done, I, I think the whole build up to that and other events that were similar to that, they were, were barely scratched the surface, but I mean, that's, the individual's right to not go too deep, uh, you know, 10 years after the event. We should also point out, Damo, that you asked Andrew Dimitrio to come on and contribute to that piece, yep. and uh, he didn't want to. Yep. But I, I'd be fairly confident that the AFL, especially when they were asked to blanket test, their players would point out that the agreement between the AFL and the Players Association under the illicit drugs policy would have uh, preclu precluded them from doing that at the it time. It did, but they were extraordinary times, Jim, and I, I can now see Trevor Nisbet's frustration with that. When you when you go to the AFL and you put on the table exactly what you know, and it, it took them a while to do that, and there were criticisms around that time for, for the reason it took so long to do so, but I think when you do, when you do ask for help, and you can see it, I mean, it's, it's raw when Trevor Nisbet refers to that now, and Dalton Gooding also referred to that as well, but yeah, we did ask Andrew, and, and he's got every right now, he's not there anymore, he chose not to. Um, I believe a fair bit of that Criticism is directed at Adrian Anderson, um, who was the footy operations manager at the time, and, and also the fact that the AFL went into its own investigation after the Eagles had started at theirs. They felt they were being blindsided effectively, and, and having the information that they gave to the AFL used against them. Damo, who hasn't uh, RSVP'd? Uh, Bill, as of last week, I believe it was Ben Cousins and Daniel Chick. There's still a couple of weeks for them to do so, but yeah. as it stands, there's at least two who, who haven't, and I believe won't they be are the names. Yeah. yeah. It's just a couple of things... That is one of the great, certainly Australian, maybe even an international tragedies of Brian, Ben Cousins. But Brian, he's I played, he's played oh, yep. with Brian at Geelong, that's why, and his parents, what they go through. Ben Cousins, what a magnificent looking man, a great athlete, and just to end up where he might end up and where he has ended up is one of the great tragedies of a certainly Australian sport, maybe even international sport. Uh, John Walsfold, a man of great integrity and honesty, a stand-up guy, was on here some years ago and what? that he was asked about that because he was the coach and he uh, uh, said he had no knowledge of any of that and I would take him on face value if it was done behind closed doors and away from the ground. Uh, so I don't think uh, John Walsfold in any way, unless someone can tell me or tell us, was responsible for any of that or condoned any of it. And thirdly, it beggars belief that the AFL did not give 
Ben Cousins a free pass to play AFL football and get him back into the AFL fold when that man was obviously taking recreational drugs, it beggars belief that they didn't know but turned a blind eye. Beggars belief. I'm not sure what you're saying there. You're saying I'm that they saying shouldn't, that shouldn't have I'm saying if they wanted to have got Ben Cousins at Richmond for playing a, a year of AFL football, wanted to na nail him for taking recreational drugs, it would have been a matter of course that they could have done it. But I think that they gave him every opportunity to get his career back online and turned a blind eye to it. And you don't think they should have done that? I'm, I'm, I'm not saying they should have done it, but if you have a look at what's going on with Essendon and all the other stuff, mate, it's, it's just so... It is so hypocritical, it's, uh, it, it's, 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 it's a beggar's well, belief. A compelling piece, very well put together. Damo, well thank done, you very Damo. much for that. Thank you. Good work, Damo. Very good work. Damo, let's get stuck into the game. Yes, we're involved back, the West Coast. Back to the football, so we've got to big game. Another big game this weekend. West Coast are playing Adelaide at the Dovane Stadium. West Coast first currently in seventh position. The one out is Cole. And the one in is McGovern, so being able to secure their back line, which is very nice, but a team travelling very well, even though they're after, uh, after coming off a close loss to a highly talented uh, Western Bulldogs. Straight across to the Adelaide boys who go up the wall, comfortably over the Saints on the weekend. They're sitting in eighth, one spot uh, behind them, but uh, they're, they're both teams only one spot out of uh, fourth, which is interesting, seeing that they are sitting where they are, Mackay and Thompson into the team. A, a big effort to get over to West still, no matter how uh, West Coast or Fremantle are really going, still a huge challenge to get over there. I think I'm going to go with West Coast though, they're, uh, they're playing some good football, haven't travelled as well this year as they probably would have liked to have, but I think they'll get the job done. Yeah, I'm going for the West Coast Eagles also, uh, I think they can win it at home. Huge game, as you said, 7v8, both 7 and 4. Yep. Uh, huge, huge game. And do you know who got the Brownlow votes last time that the West Coast played Adelaide? Would it be the man beside me? P. Dangerfield got two. Don't think he'll get him this time, Bill. No, probably not. <laughs> Danger? Probably uh, not. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a big in for, for the Crows with Scotty Thompson coming back. He's a, a real brummer for them and really important uh, inside the contest. I think it's going to be interesting to see the battle between uh, Josh Jenkins, who's had a phenomenal season so far and kicked 34 goals to, to halfway through the year, and obviously big Josh Kennedy. So... I think, uh, depending on who is the dominant player out of those two, will be... Out of the Joshes. Out of the Joshes will yeah. determine the result. And I think Josh Jenkins might just kick a real bag and uh, cement himself as one of the genuine um, key forwards in the competition and certainly someone that you want to sign up. Mm. Right up. Mm. Samuel, mm. have you been watching the Adelaide who games? Who is that? Uh, Josh, I have. Is he going for? He's going for Adelaide, Adelaide. I think. Oh, yeah. Well, that are you? Yeah. Going for Adelaide. Yeah. I have done. One, one of our uh, ex-teammates, Tommy Lynch, is playing some good footy at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I normally hasn't... turn the tally off when he gets it. But, uh... <laughs> hasn't hasn't oh. taken you long to be reticent about tipping against your old side, I noticed. No, I think... No, they... mate, come on, mate. You're only picking them because you used well, to Sam, play from them. You, you don't you want people to say, oh, sour grapes. <laughs> no, <laughs> if you look through the history of the season so far... No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to win, Sam? I'm, not doing I'm going with my friend here. Oh. I'm going... Uh, <laughs> at, at, you'd think it's a milestone game for the... Uh, yes. But there's no such thing as milestone mm. games. What they did 10 years ago, no one could... Or 20 yes. years ago, no one could give us stuff. Okay. Uh, Adelaide for you. Thank you. Right, okay. Okay. Playing some terrific football. Your mate Tex has been in absolutely great form. Seems to have recovered substantially from that foot injury that she wouldn't fill us in mm. about last week at all. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, I'm just going to go West Coast just because just because they're at home, but just by that much. I don't know whether you saw the show last week, Danger. I know you're yes. uh, glued to it every Thursday night. But here is your old mate Tex, and when we asked him <laughs> how we saw your season to date. How have you seen your former teammate Danger in the first ten weeks? Has he played as you expected him to? To be honest, uh, Jimmy, I haven't really watched him. No. Oh. Oh. Um, what? Don't care? Or? Uh, his opposition and treat him as such. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, he's playing some good footy, and obviously, I think mean, he's enjoying it down at Geelong. But uh, we've moved on, and we've, obviously, our midfield are playing some really good footy as well. So still in business um, together, the two of you. Yeah, and myself and Sloney are obviously in the armour and we're probably doing most of the work, pulling, <laughs> pulling the punches and Dane just sitting back just counting his cash. <laughs> well, there's a correction first, JB. Yes. Those two are doing all the work. Yes. Well, I haven't done any of it. Yes. Um, what was the other that thing? That looked a little frosty there. Yeah, Jimmy yes. well, hasn't watched any cash. of your midfield? games. Oh, their midfield's going all right. I think it went all right as well. Last year they were down. Mm. With you in it? <laughs> Better yeah. with you in it or out of it? 
Oh, well, we're, we're way on the ladder and oh. we're the guys. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and they said you were counting the cash. You're still getting a fair, uh, fair sling from them? <laughs> like from Love the Game, Sam? No, not from, no, from the, from the, the Elmer, business. Uh, yeah, it goes very well, the Elmer. If you are going to venture to Adelaide at some stage, it's the number one destination for you. All right, we need to get to a break. Things. Let me just say this very quickly, that uh, Sandra from Patterson Lakes has donated 500 bucks, which oh, is absolutely Sandra, brilliant. Thank you. Rick from Viewbank, 150. Oh, the donations are flying in. So please, SMS the word freeze to the number below or freezemnd.com online and give generously to what is a fantastic cause. We're going to a break. Still lots to come on a bigger right. day. Jesus like at school. <laughs> How old were you when you lost your virginity, Sam? Oh! Is Raylene Boyle a good kisser? What is your advice for spicing up a marriage? Mm. What is your best pickup line? I used to say, you okay. now. Oh. <laughs> Have you got any advice for the future? You got no future, mate. <laughs> <laughs> And what the FOSS is coming up very, very shortly. But first, Bill, we need to get to another game. Yes, we do. Richmond taking on the Gold Coast Sailing Sunday MCG. Oh, the Tigers have only had four wins. They got belted last week. Victory kicked a couple on Jackie Rebel. Out goes uh, Charlie Chaplin and Morris. Unfortunately, good luck to Morris there. In comes Grimes, Conker, Mr. McBean, Menadieu, and Short. So, uh, and they take on the Gold Coast Suns. Thompson, Mackenzie, Shaw, Day and Lemons. Out goes Hall. Hall's, he was their best player for the like, first four weeks. He's been dropped. And Archie uh, uh, has also been dropped with a calf. Um, Tigers. Tigers have just got to win this one, Nicky Dell. Yeah, he's dropped down severely last week with injuries. I think they had three or four guys go off with a stretcher, which is rare in a game this day and age. But I think they'll bounce back and they'll beat the Gold Coast this week. Oh, Tigers for me, uh, too much class with them if you Well done to Brandon Ellis, plays his 100th game. What yeah. do you think here, Force? Yes, uh, the Tigers. You mm. couldn't tip the goal. Yeah. Could you? You couldn't, no. so I'm going the Tigers as well. Yeah. Yeah. Two, oh. things, two things have fired you up this week. Firstly, it was the, uh, to, uh, the match Tom Hawkins panel. match review panel. Well. And then secondly, something slipped into your letterbox and oh. you came charging into the meeting. Oh. A room key. Uh, now, seriously, see this here. Oh. This is the 52nd epistle <laughs> on the great oh. bloody Rebecca Madden. You'd think that she's... 23 years I've been doing this. I've, we've worked and slaved. We've had Ed here. We've had Gary and yes. Jim and Fat and Shane. She's been here a minute. She's sucked the oxygen out of us. Oh. She, look, we don't even get a mention. Any there. mention of Sam Newman? Not a mention of you. No, you. No. Hang on. No, hang no. on. Jim? Nothing. No. Yeah. Now, I, think, I tell you how seriously, this thing works. This is sexism. No. This is reverse sexism. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not. No, I'll tell you how this thing works. Like, yeah, you have an in-depth interview. It goes for about two hours. I do mention your name. Surely, oh, yeah. within two hours no. of conversation, I mention your names. Yeah. Or maybe I don't. No. And they just choose what they want to print. Of course, you've got a fresh You're air not in that Interesting party. enough. That's fresh air. <laughs> couldn't even... Nothing. Not even he's a stupid old... Uh, nothing. Not even... Couldn't oh. bring yourself to dribble my name out of your mouth. You couldn't even... <laughs> oh, uh, me, 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 me. <laughs> Look at me. So not true. Uh, let's I hope about these guys that is the, the last uh, thing that we see on... I know she's great and we love her and all that crap, but honestly... Well, the boys look very <laughs> interested. That, uh, Look at Nick and Patty reading the article. They're very yeah, interested. Yeah, no, I... I read, it to see oh, I, was, thanks, Nick. I read it to see if I, I read it to see if I was mentioned nothing. Samuel. And Jim, you know, it's taking pressure off you. They don't yes. flock to you now for interviews. And have they, they ever time. flocked to you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there we are. So uh, let's hope that's the final. Anyway, you put that down. Right. No, it that's is not the last one. In fact, I have uh, on very good authority that the biggest magazine in oh. this country, <laughs> Women's Weekly, may have uh, Beck on the front. Early this week. No, is that, is that true? No, I can't remember that one. Oh. Is, is that right? Early in the next week. Uh, no, be, don't worry, Fox, there'll be a mention, there'll be a mention in that. There'll be a mention of you in that. I definitely mention you, Bill, you, Sam, you, James. Yep. 
Yeah. He's filthy up. Yeah, oh, man. Hey, you, um, if we're not mentioned back, yeah. I'll see you off the show. I'll oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you? Mm. Right, eight, time to move things along. GWS play Sydney. <laughs> GWS's 100th club game. Ryan Griffin returns from a back injury. Should be a ripping contest, Del. Yeah, another fantastic game this week. The game is in Sydney, you are correct. Patrick. Uh, GWS. No particular reason, actually, like Sydney really highly. Just love the way that the GWS boys are going about their football. Exciting, attacking football, which is the modern way to go about their football. Um, I think they'll just get over the line. GWS. Yeah. Some good intel there, do that. Giants are playing Sydney in Sydney. That's good, Patty. Uh, I'm going to go with the Giants too. Sam, are you tipping this one? Yeah, I'm tipping. Of course, I'm tipping. Off you go. Sydney. Oh. Sydney. Watch Dylan Shield play, obviously, last week because GWS played Geelong. He is a sensational player. He will be the difference through the midfield, and I'm going through GWS for me <laughs> this week. Uh, we have a very important segment coming up because it is the footy show stakes, and that is after the break. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the footy show stakes. Icy conditions at the track. Just waiting for the two horses from Hobart to thaw out. And racing. First out is Ryan Crowley. Oh, no. What's this? He's done a hammy. Best thing he's ever done, according to the Frio crowd. Followed closely by Ross Lyon on tanking. What tanking? Next is Joe Wingles on Twitter feud. Taking aim at Bernie Vets on garbage. Oh, the rain has set in, folks. The Sydney and Gold Coast horses are caught up in it. But both still managed to overtake Justin Leppich and Damien Hartwick on holding on for grim life. While the Collingwood party boat has well and truly blown off course. The problem being too many passengers. With one reported missing. Managing post in view. It's Crowley. It's Franklin and Evelyn. It's definitely not Travis. It's Brendan Bolton surfing the wave of Carlton success. It's a good story. That's what footy's all. Footy show stakes. Now, this is an important game at, well, sort of an important game. Friday night at Eddie Head. Let's take a look. It's Essendon up against the Mighty Hawks. Let's take a look at the Essendon side. Out goes Crowley, Bagley, and McDonald, Tip and Wooty. In comes a bit of experience for Essendon. J Mark comes in, James Kelly in, and Matthew Stokes as well. For Hawthorne, they've got a big out actually. Yeah. Sam Mitchell. So does Jonathan Segler. In comes Will Langford. We've got the Frenchman in as well, Mark Pittenet and Angus Litherland as well. The Bombers have lost six out of the last seven against the Hawks. Bill, you'd think this would be the walk in the park for the you, Hawks. You, you would think the Hawks would get over the line here, Beck. Yes. The Hawks, hopefully, I would have thought. Um, that's about enough said on that one. <laughs> yeah, Hawks for me. Go on, you, baby. Go on. Men running as women in the Olympics, that's a fact. Russia in the Olympics, recidivist cheats, and Essendon's fate still pending over in Switzerland. The world has gone mad. That's your tip? Yes. Uh, Beck? Yes, Hawthorne yeah, for you, yeah. also yeah. for me. Mind you, Essendon in patches have been playing some really, really good footy. Hawthorne will obviously be too good, but lift your spirits. Keep Mar on going. Mars Matchups time, of course, so you can get stuck into these online. MarsMatchups.com.au. Uh, most kicks for Zach Merritt and Jordan, Lewis. Jordan. And then Charlie with Jake Stringer Willis. Stringer. Uh, uh, Callum Ward and Luke Parker, most clearances. Uh, Ward. And then uh, Ben Reid and Jesse Hogan, most marks. Mars Matchups. So very Hogan. important. Online, as I say, Bill. Big game Sunday again. Uh, 110 at Eddie Had. It's the mighty St Kilda footy club. The Saints, they've got to respond and they have at the uh, selection table in Delaney, Lee, Wright, Pierce, Akers, Minchintung and Sinclair <laughs> out. Nick Revolt, the big Rue boy is yes. out. So is Shawnee Dempster who's been very good. Paddy McCartan's no good, he's been for Cup. And you got out. Take on Cup and Phillips. And a big, big end. Have a look at that in there. Ooh. Jack Silvani, oh. son of Joe. And good luck to Jackie Boy, of course, who kicked four goals in reserves last week. They are the squads, but good luck if Jack gets in. I'm going with Carlton to win, what, five and six in a row? I think it's six in a row.
But anyway, uh, we're going for St Kilda. I think they've got too many outs. Um, obviously, the skipper, Nick Rewalt, having a fantastic season. Hard to replace. Can't replace him. Um, I think Carlton will just get over the line. Yeah, echoing the thoughts of, of Dale around uh, Rui, he's having an unbelievable season and I think he'll be too big a loss to cover. I don't know the answer to this question, Force, but have there been any grandfather, father and son combinations all play footy for the same club? Oh, yeah, it would be I an know. amazing Ooh. story. Do you know the answer? No, uh, the great Surge and then Stephen, yeah, the no. superstar, and Jack, if he plays, it would be a wonderful thing. Yeah. So, I don't know of any... No, I don't either. It's uh, a question I don't know the answer to. Yeah. Now, who do you think is going to win? Uh, incidentally, Bob Gartland, I know uh, Patrick yes. told me uh, mm -hmm. he's got a great museum of Geelong memorabilia great. as well. Yes. He'd Quick be annoyed if we didn't mention him. Uh, yes. you, you've got carried away with Carlton. Uh, at St Kilda, I don't care who th who's out, yes. uh, St Kilda will uh, eclipse Carlton at Eddie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Playing great football, the Blues for me. Hey, the, uh, Start the donations have been <laughs> extraordinary <laughs> for Freeze MND. SMS the word Freeze, you can see the number or get online freezemnd.com. Okay. Alex <laughs> from Strathalbyn, the Adelaide uh, danger starting to come in. How much? Beautiful uh, town in the Adelaide Hills, 50 bucks. Cheryl from Elizabeth Downs, 25 bucks. This is why the footy show is extraordinary here because as we drift south, they just keep coming in force. The number is extraordinary. We're going to release that shortly, but we'll go to a break now. Welcome back to the Footy Show. Great to have your company. The Docklands Precinct, of course. Big Willis, uh, drive us home. Yes, please. It's Brisbane versus Fremantle at the Gamma. Brisbane only one win for the year. They lost to Carlton last week. A couple of changes here. Buick, Gardner and Andrews come in. Christensen out. Uh, Payne has a sore foot. And Freeman is left free. He's out. And take on the mighty Fremantle. They've had one win also. They won their last eight against the Lions. Anna Clark and Smith in. Pavlich is out. Sore groin, Pav. Big Pav. Griffin and Apeness is out also with a collarbone. <laughs> oh, no. That's his name. Apeness is. Yeah. Yeah, good. Apeness. Apeness. Yeah. Apeness. Apeness. Uh, quick tips uh, we've been told from upstairs. So we'll just say uh, Fremantle. I'll, uh, after winning their game last week, um, I'll tip Freo again. It's amazing what happens when Barlow and Spur turn up yes. to play a decent game of football. Uh, playing some good footy, Freo, but I reckon Brizzy are hard to beat up there. It's oh. got a sneaking suspicion oh, they might win. Gee. Oh, no. I'm taking Ross Lyons' trophy back for Coach of the Year, which we awarded uh, for winning against Essendon. How, why, how could he possibly have done that? Why did he try and win against <laughs> Essendon? So we've taken that back. Right. That's a retrospective knockback. And uh, uh, on the the basis of that, Brisbane will beat uh, Fremantle. Brisbane. Yes, Brisbane for me too. Well done, Beck. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we may all get, we're getting straight to a break because what the, fonts, the questions have Another piled one. in, yeah. Bill. The boys are ready to ask what the audience want to hear from our man Sam Newman. That's next. Ooh. <laughs> to remind you about next week. The Tigers are a very big story in footy and we have Damien Hardwick on the Ooh. show live next week. Ooh. And we also have the next instalment of Old Woman Craw for Nick Del Santo helped to stitch up Goldstein. So that is must-see mm. TV. Mm. So stick around for that next week. But now it is time for What the Fox! <laughs> Very simple concept this, everyone in the crowd simple. writes a question down they've always wanted to know from the FOSS. The boys read it out on behalf of the crowd member. Danger, are you starting? Yes, I am. Alright, who is it? <laughs> this is from Tom Evans. Where are you, Tommy? Oh, right down, down the front, front here. Hi, Look Tommy. At... Tommy. Nice and hey, relaxed, Tommy. Right right you must know someone to be down oh. the front. Wow, well, <laughs> yes. Sammy, Sam was putting yes, yes. Pamela Anderson on the front of your house. A sad and expensive attempt to get her in the sack. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I've taken a lot of flack over this, Tommy. Um, Pamela Anderson's facade on my the house I had was designed by a woman, I can't mention her name because she got a big head, Cassandra Faye, and <laughs> she designed it so that uh, it, was, it, it was unique, so that her mouth was the roller door, so that when you... 
Her mouth, mouth this is Ted Ingham. Her mouth was the roller, so when you drove your car towards the roller and pressed the button, her mouth opened and you drove your car into her mouth. <laughs> now, we were going to have a back entrance. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no, no. Next no, no, question, no. Nick, have you got that one? But the council wouldn't sign off on it. Uh, yeah. Next, next, next one. question. That is, that is a boss. fact. Next question. Next one's from Travis Mitchell. Where are you, Trav? Trav, we're oh, in the well, middle up the back. Nice. Trav, Trav, where are you? Stand up, Trav. Trav, D right. supporter. Yeah. Trav's Take the question... bathing cap off, the pool's shut. <laughs> Trav's... <laughs> Trav's question to the Foss is, my wife reckons you kiss like a granddad. Is this true? Oh. Is my... You tell your wife, uh, what's his name? Trav. 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 Uh, don't underestimate me. If she'd like to come and give me a try, by the time <laughs> she's finished with me, she'd think a flock of blackbirds had flown out yeah. of us. <laughs> Just a sec, and to announce, oh. we have just heard from Freeze MND that tonight the footy show has contributed $175,000. Oh. And counting, because the show's still going to wear in Adelaide and, of course, in Perth, that makes the grand total $537,000, which is absolutely brilliant. Sensation. Keep the money coming in until the big game on Monday. And uh, we thank everyone for coming and watching, of course, at home as well. Have a safe week. We'll see you this time next week.